Okay, we'll uh, try to address these points. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Just to respond to the question on the $25,000, the Condo Association received an anonymous donation of $25,000 to help with legal fees. And that included legal fees for liens and foreclosures and all the actions we're taking to try and get five units that aren't paying out of 96 this point uh, into compliance where we have paying owners in by the end of the year we're hoping to have everybody paying the rate we're going there's legal actions going a number of those in the condos paying for all of the legal fees for those so we're making progress on that so hopefully we will be at full compliance there by the end of the year we can do that thank you that's, that's good news The first uh, question from Mr. Polkauer was a breakdown on the last assessment. Can you address that? Um, actually, the assessment was approved by the Board of Review Commission in 2008. It went to everybody. Right. Yep. Do you know, therefore, your people paid? I know it personally. Okay. Okay, so you can't answer because they have to be. You, you have to put records on it. We know that they have a whole process. They have to be all paid, but to give you a breakdown, the way we get the pay for work is very Okay, we're we're just having a discussion between the board members and we'll clarify for you, but um, you wanna address that? Okay. We're we're going to address this with the condo treasurer. And the question was I think if if all the people who were assessed last time paid or not. And the, the short the short answer is that we did not get the entire assessment from the kind of one association. <laughs> Unfortunately, Norman does not have that paperwork with him here, but it was, every time a check, excuse me, every time a check was sent to the Master Association, it was noted on a spreadsheet who paid with that check. Uh, the last I heard, I think there were six people that hadn't paid the assessment, which was a total of $360. So we remitted everything but $360. Well, you're saying you Thank you. The last time you and I discussed okay. it, yeah. right. it could be more now. We don't have to check ours. So everybody heard that all we owe on the assessments is three hundred and sixty dollars. But what do you owe? Why do you still owe three hundred and sixty dollars? Because it's not paid by the unit owners. Okay. Uh, can I ask the whoever is in charge? Um, <coughs> no. No. Well, can I? Do we? When we were assessed, and you know, I'm a, a member of the board. When we were assessed. Did we pay the full amount for every villa? Did we pay the people? I know there's some people in the villas that aren't. Yes, yes. yes. the, the, the villas. So we paid up to different. The list paid. The villas paid, paid the whole. So we paid the full amount. Correct. Why did the condo not pay the $360? These are the little things because that are getting everybody upset. Okay, hold on just a minute. The question was, why did the villa association paid the full amount of the last assessment and the condo association did not and a quick short answer is because that's the way they chose to do it but I'll let Louise talk to that I'm sorry not because that's the way we chose not to do it uh, we were advised the whole crux of this lawsuit is whether we are a pass-through agent or we should remit everything that is not collected so based on our attorney's advice 
we did not remit what we did not collect, which is exactly what this whole lawsuit is about. And uh, what are we doing? Are we doing the same thing for the maintenance, maintenance, the monthly maintenance? Yes. Yes. That's where we have five units that are not, but again, we read the, the judge's injunction. Our association is not a member of the master association. The individual owners are, they're the ones who need to pay. If they don't, the master association has the remedy of putting a lien on their property and other legal things. There's a difference between the association and the membership in another association. Was this, was this being done before this whole lawsuit began? Yes. No, because people were not holding back money before the lawsuit. Yes. No? There was some in the past where people did not pay, but again, it's our documents. It's not the, it's not the lawsuit, it's the documents. And we have tried since March, when we filed a motion for summary judgment to get this case to the, the judge to get it settled, we went through 12 hours of mediation, nothing is working. The decision to not pay the full amount prior to any lawsuits or anything going on. The documents of the, our documents are different. That's the question that needs to be determined legally. Okay. I'd like to respond to that. I've read this before. Two people have spoken here. I, don't, I didn't get the name of the first one. The second one was Marilyn Hatch. They both addressed the injunction. I can tell you they filed an emergency injunction. The judge's ruling on the injunction has absolutely nothing to do with the case. He did not review the case. He hasn't read all the documents. That won't even happen until we get to court. In the meantime, when they file their request for an emergency injunction, and I've read this to people before, they state that the Master Association seeks to hold the association responsible for the unit owner's assessment owed to the Master Association even though the association is only acting as a pass-through agent collecting for what they get. Now, that's what they gave to the judge. There's no language in their documents or our documents to that effect. Under item 18 on page 10 of the counterclaim, they purport to claim that they are required to provide an accounting to the master association of the assessments paid and reports any delinquencies of assessments that are not paid by the owners. There's no language in the documents, theirs or ours. They are making this up, and their attorneys are agreeing with them. And the only way we can go to court and get a resolve is before a judge. Now, as far as Mr. McGovern is concerned, who has said that we're asking the judge to rewrite our documents, that is not what's in those 38 pages that you have. If you read them carefully, you'll find out we're asking the judge to interpret those documents as they are written. And a judge under law is powerless to change anything unless they are ambiguous. That is the law. Check with your other law firm people. Now, secondly, or thirdly, whatever it is, let me read a statement here. <clears throat> And this is from the Condo Association documents. Now read the whole thing. Common expenses shall include the expenses of the operation, maintenance, repair or replacement of the common elements, cost of carrying out the powers and duties of the association, and any other expense designated as common expense by the Condominium, Condominium Act, this declaration for the bylaws. It says, second sentence, the association, condo, shall also collect from unit owners and remit to the master associations all assessments of the master association. That's under Article 13.1 of your documents. That's what the Very judge, clear. That's what the judge referred to. No, he didn't. He referred to what you put in the language that you said that meant, because that's right in your motion for emergency injunction. And that's only granted to get you back in the clubhouse. And his ruling, where she said that he ruled against, he ruled against statute 305, subsection two, which said that we had to go after each individual to lock them out, rather than collectively. And we went collectively against the condos. 
So he just interpreted the law and it was just then you were wrong. wrong. In July, then you were wrong. Mm -hmm. I said, you're wrong. See, the judge you said we were wrong. Floor, you're correct. The judge said we were wrong to lock you out. That is the action of the injunction. He told us we had to let you back in. Which the next did. day we changed the locks. You were back in. We did what the law said. The law and the documents do not say you're a collecting agent. The fact that he wrote these things in an injunction doesn't mean a thing. And the only way we're going to get anywhere is to go to court and let the judge read your documents, read our documents. Now let me say something else on your documents. Let me just get something else from 14 point uh, <coughs> six. Uh, <coughs> while, he's, while he's looking for that, let me add that some of you may wonder why the judge didn't read our documents. And the reason was our lawyer was detained in a previous hearing on another case that had nothing to do with this. And when she rushed over to the courtroom, the judge had already terminated that hearing and didn't allow our lawyer to <coughs> present our case. No, excuse me. Uh, we were there. Plus, what you put in there. He cut out. He cut out ten minutes. That's where ten minutes she was. She was there. Yeah. Well, she, she was, was there, but you also had to remit paperwork within ten minutes to the judge defending <coughs> your position. We had to also submit paperwork to the judge defending the position, and he read that and then made his decision. Plus, he said at the meeting, at the hearing, when the attorneys, both sides, tried to read the documents, he said, I've already read your documents. He e each them. attorney was required to submit a brief. That's what he ruled. No, he ruled. The he only document he was involved, involved in was for the injunction. That's and different. Okay. So okay. That's, 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 that's going to be seen. Maybe I'm, done, perhaps done. I'm wrong, but we'll, we'll get to that. Let me read the other thing for 14.6. I don't think that's working. I don't need anything. If the holder of a mortgage of record or other purchaser of a unit obtains title to a condominium parcel by purchase at the public sale, resulting from such holders foreclosure judgment in a foreclosure suit in which the association has been properly named the defendant. It goes on and on about foreclosures or any other reasons why they lose assessments. It says such unpaid share of common expenses or, assessment, or assessments shall be deemed to be a common expense collectible from all unit owners, including such acquirer and successes and assigned which says that if you're not getting paid from your people, it becomes a common expense, and everyone else that is paying has to pay for it. These are the documents. When we go to court and the judge is going to read it, I am 100% satisfied. They're not ambiguous. He will rule in our favor. Also, the master documents say the same thing. Very simple language. The sentence says you want to collect and remit it to the master association all, all assessments of the master association. Plain and simple. You can talk to Mr. Gravis. You can talk to whoever you want. You can talk to your attorneys. We'll go to court because we have no other option. You do not want to understand that. Mr. Gravis. <coughs> I'd like to just address what Mr. Compella just said. Do you want the microphone, please? Uh, can everybody hear me? No. 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 Hello. Okay. I just want to address this, uh, Mr. Compella said. I didn't come here and say anything. I wanted to listen, but after hearing that dissertation, I think that it, this all is a comment for me. Uh, Mr. Compella is always interpreting some sort of document in error. Whether this 14.1 has to do with uh, the Congo documents, well, if that has to do with the Congo documents, what it really means is that we have to make up for the shortage within our condo unit, not make up the shortage to the master association. And this is a classic example of an error and a misinterpretation by the master board. And, and people, you can shake your heads, but you see, this is the kind of element that we're dealing with. We're dealing with somebody who wants to take it to court because they don't want to listen to reason. They just want to make errors, just like the error in the suspension. 
the suspension, we had to take that to court and, and the judge ruled in our favor. Well, you don't think the judge is going to rule in our favor on that one? He can read all the documents to you, but when the judge reads them, he's going to read them right. 